Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. I do want to remind you the program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show at support.greatdetectives.net. You can also become an ongoing supporter of the program at patreon.greatdetectives.net. Now it's time for today's episode of Richard Diamond. The original air date, December the 17th, 1949. And this is the John Blackwell case. Portions of the following are transcribed. Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Is this the Diamond Detective Agency? Yeah. Down, up, round, and down. Mr. Diamond, I presume? Yes, and maybe no. Down, up, round, and round. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand you. Uh, yes, I'm Diamond, and you're not presuming on me, not if you're a client. Oh, no, that's not what I mean. What is that object you're playing with? Uh, this? This is a yo-yo. You make it go down, up, round, and down. See? Uh, yes, yes. But, but I came in on business, Mr. Diamond. I want to hire you. Just drop it like this. Down, up, as a detective. Oh. Well, a hundred a day in expenses, and I throw in the yo-yo lessons free. Give me the Mr. Diamond. Are you in business? Do you have the hundred a day? I do. I am. That's fine. Your name? Oh, I, I can't tell you that. Goodbye. Will you kindly put that thing away? I have a terrible head. Oh, I don't know. It's not so bad. Carve it yourself. Why, you insufferable... Now, wait a minute. Until we've had a formal introduction, the word insufferable is your ticket for a new set of dentures. Now, why don't we get formal and save your gums that lonely feeling? I told you my name is not important. That I believe, but let's kick it around anyway. Is that necessary? Look, look, you said you wanted to hire me. So either tell me your name or what you wanted me to do, or let me get back to my practicing. Uh, I, I should find another detective, but you came highly recommended, so... All right. Uh, you can call me, uh, Johns. Other wife? What? Forget it. Initials on your briefcase read J.B. Oh, oh, that, it, it's one I borrowed. So, now that I've conquered your coyness, what's the Pitch? Pitch? Oh, oh, you mean my assignment. Oh, it's very simple, but first, I must insist that no word of this conversation leaves your office. So far, no one would believe it anyhow. But my ethics are in good order, Mr. Johns. Good, good. This must be kept very secret. Shall I pull down the blinds and stuff the keyhole? Oh, that shan't be necessary, thank you. Your secret is... Uh, murder, Mr. Diamond. Oh, I just knew you were going to say that. Where's the corpse? Uh, the corpse? Oh, that's what I came to you for. I want to have professional advice on every angle before I kill. Now, you've had police experience. Uh, I... Unless my hearing aid's on the blink, you're saying you want to commit a murder. Oh, not want. I'm going to. This evening. Oh. What do you want me for? The victim? Oh, I have the victim, the opportunity, method, uh, and the man to handle the uh, details. However, I want to be sure that I'm not tripped up by my lack of foresight to police procedures. Oh, uh, sure, 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 yeah. Uh, whom are you calling? The police, but you'll probably get sent to Bellevue. Mr. Diamond, your ethics. Ethics about concealing or helping a murder are free passage to Sing Sing. The phone. Put it down quickly. Oh, my. Isn't that shiny? A real gun. Those things are illegal, you know. Must you shake it so much? Uh, oh, uh, sorry. I, I'm a little nervous. Oh, swell. You're nervous. Hey, quiet, quiet. I'm thinking. This visit has obviously been an error. Perhaps not a fatal one. Let's see. I have it. Into the closet. What? With my bicycle? It'll be too crowded. Your bicycle? Oh, my exercise bicycle. And that's my, there's my rowing board. And oh, my, my be weight. quiet. Stop walking. Oh, this is ridiculous. Now open that door. Oh, okay. Uh, now that bicycle. It has a seat? Well, yes. Sit on it. So the Diamond Detective Agency sat in the stuffy closet listening to the sound of the desk being pulled over and jammed against the door. Not having anything better to do except call myself names, I rode. On my fifth lap around the world, I gave birth to a brainchild and began applying the art of leverage against the blockaded door 
using both legs and the flat of my back. Result? A Charlie horse. On the third lap following, I came up with something more substantial. A heavy barbell. Four smashes and three torn ligaments later, the thin door collapsed over the desk blocking it. I picked my way over the debris, trying to focus my eyes to the light. By instinct, more than sight, I found the phone. But as I reached to pick it up, I suddenly realized I was shaking hands with someone. Back up, Diamond. Oh, this is getting ridiculous. All my clients waving guns at me. I'm no client, Diamond. Mr. Johns wants I should keep your company for a while. Oh, well, you're a small one. This gun makes me a big one, Diamond. Real big. That's why my nickname is Big Man, even though I'm only four feet tall. Oh, maybe I could help you. I've got a lot of exercise things. Be funny or shut up. How about a few yo-yo lessons? <laughs> Say, it's very funny. Shut up. Big Man, what would happen if I took that gun away from you? You want to try? Well, I was giving it a thought. But on second thought, uh, no. Yeah, smart Shamus. I can empty this magazine in your stomach before you make two steps. It... Rick, I... Oh, I didn't know you had a client. Take it easy, Diamond. I got a gun in my pocket. Uh, the, uh, H- Helen, Helen, baby, come in. Uh, uh, meet Big Man McCarthy, an old, old pal from PS69. Big Man, this is, uh, Miss Asher. Oh, yes, delighted, Mr. McCarthy. Hey, same here, chick. Say, pal, you got good taste. Some built. <laughs> Such a flatterer. Rick, what happened to your closet? Uh, the termites broke my non-aggression pact. Uh, what's on your mind, baby? Well, I came to see if you were ready for the benefit tonight. You are, aren't you? Oh, well, am I? Just watch this new yo-yo trick. They call it round the world. Oh, wonderful. Oh, Rick, you know so many things. Where'd you learn that? A PS-69, of course. Where else? Mr. McCarthy. Do it again, Rick. I want to see how you do it. Sure, baby, just watch. You take it in your hand like this and throw it out like this. (laughs) Oh, Rick, you struck that poor little man. No. Well, that poor little man had a big nasty gun in his pocket and it was pointed right at my breakfast. Why, that horrible little... Why didn't you hit him harder? He might have hurt you. Oh, darling, are you sure you're all right? Uh, I'm sure, baby. Will you send for the police? He should be behind... Now, look, Helen, this is my department. You'll go along with your errands. Rick, he's dangerous. Helen, will you go away? I have a few questions I want to ask this little hood and you'll be of no help, believe me. Well, all right, but you be careful... Oh, and uh, about tonight. It's not at my apartment, but the park is penthouse up above in the same building. Now, come early and help Francis and me get things ready. Stop pushing. I'll see you tonight, baby. Oh, Rick. Are you sure I can't stay? Go, scat. Now, for you, Mr. Big Man. Come here. Wake up. Wake up. The mule train went that way. Come on, come out of it. Ah, uh, uh, that's you, huh? Yeah, me. Now, what's the real name of your boss? Who's he going to kill? You can stop the questions, Diamond. I'm not going to talk. You want me to wring it out of you like a wet wash? Who is Mr. Johns? You know, there's a big advantage in being little Diamond. Yeah, you can hide under smaller rocks. <laughs> Who's your boss? There's another advantage, too. A man my size can be awfully hard to catch. What? Hey, come back here. Shaman. <laughs> he never looked so good. Shut up, Otis. He's really been worked over. Wonder what gang did this to him. Rick. Rick, snap out of it. Oh, oh. Rick, what happened? Oh, just came through the door. Oh. What? Coming through the door couldn't wreck you like that. Oh, without opening it? You mean. Oh, no. You got that shiner by running into the door? <laughs> Shut up, Otis. Okay, Rick, where's the body? Uh, beside you. Now, that's Otis. I mean, where's the corpse? Uh, the corpse isn't a corpse yet. Otis, get my bicarbonate. Hey, yellow tooth. Go on, Rick. The corpse isn't a corpse. Tell me, what is it? A ghost? Exactly. Otis? Hey, hey yellow tooth. Mm. Now, Rick, do me a favor. Please tell me what you're talking about. Oh, you aren't trying, Walt. All I said was that the corpse isn't a corpse yet and that it's a ghost because I don't know who's going to be the corpse. Rick, before I go stark raving mad, will you tell me what you're talking about? Well, a man came into my office this morning, said he was going to commit a murder. Threw a gun on me when I started to call you. Locked me in a closet. I broke out only to find he left this little man, big man, the midget who just ran out of here. Stop, please. So Helen came in. I turned the tables on big man. She left. I asked questions, drew a blank. Big man started to run. Why didn't you nab him? He ran through the door. I ran into it. 
You're up to date. <laughs> I'm up to date. Get him. I'm up to my ears in confusion. So we've got a man who's going to murder someone. All right, what's his name? He said Johns, but it's a phony. Initials on his briefcase read J.B. Uh, say, Shamus, what do you look like? Uh, Otis, do you have a son? Oh, you know I don't. Well, that's what he looked like. Rick, are you sure this J.B. is planning to kill someone tonight? Well, if he isn't, he sure took a lot of pains for nothing. Let's get down to headquarters. I want to check the files. Well, okay, but we don't keep files on ghosts. Oh, by the way, why did you come up here? Helen called. Said you were holding a pigeon for us. Oh, lovely girl. I'll say... Can I have a dance with her at the benefit tonight? Uh, no, Otis. I think I better fix you up with Francis. Swell. Otis, you gravelhead. Francis is a butler. Oh, it's all right, Lieutenant. I like them foreign dames. Well, that's all the pictures, Walt. I've looked them all. Johns doesn't have a record, neither does a big man. Yeah, they wouldn't. The one time we get a chance to stop a murder before it's committed, and we've even got a good description of the potential killer. Well, this this J.B. was no bum. Not even an ordinary working man. His clothes are expensive, and the briefcase he carried probably cost more than your weekly salary. Now, it's an even bet he belongs to the social upper crust. That or close to it. Well, that would narrow the field a lot, but still... How I... about the newspapers, Wall? They have society reporters who know anyone who is anyone... It's a long shot, but name, name me a better. You can go through the newspaper morgues. They might have a picture of Oh, something. no, no, Walt, no pictures. I'm nearly blind from looking at pictures now. Thanks, but I'll try the reporters with a description. It sounds like you're going to search for a needle in a haystack. Oh, Otis, please, your cliché is showing. Ah, uh, that's screwy. You can't kid me. Only dames wear clichés. How could mine be showing? Sergeant, when you die, will your brain to a clinic, maybe they'll discover a cure for it. Ah, lay off. Besides, I got a good idea for your investigation. I wouldn't miss hearing this for my next two issues of Batman. Yeah, I was thinking you could maybe save a lot of time if you got an artist to draw a picture from your description. They do it in all the movies and catch crooks easy. Otis, how would you like a transfer hey, to Walt. Staten? Wait a minute, wait a minute. He may have an idea. I know where there's an artist who could sketch J.B. from a description. It's crazy, but you may as well try it, Rick. Otis, you can drive him there. Uh, uh, Lieutenant. Uh, tell him yes, Walt. I can't stand to see him cry. All right, Otis. You can use the siren. <laughs> Come on, Otis. It's right at the head of the stairs. Uh, who is this guy? Her uh, name's Vladimir, and be careful. He's temperamental. Oh, that's okay. I've been vaccinated. What, what, what? Open up, Vladimir. Runga dren. Go away. My name Patrick O'Brien. It's Diamond, not the landlord. Comrade, come in. Stalin. No, Vladimir. That's Sergeant Otis. Oh. What a startle he gave me. Uh, Vladimir, can you sketch a man's face from a description? Can I sketch a man's face from a description? Can I sketch? Did I not once sketch the whole Russian army and with one pencil? Okay, Vladimir, but can you do it? Comrade, you doubt it? I am the greatest artist that's impossible. I can draw... Uh, comrade, you are paying cash money. Cash money? Oh, for that I can draw you Siberia and never miss a salt mine. I'm such a genius, I can't stand myself. Another man, Vladimir. Can you sketch the man's face? I think so. Okay, but make it fast. I'll give you the general idea and correct you as you go. Corrections you can make. One criticism, I go back to my shave cream signs. Come with me to my hizzle. <laughs> Well, almost, Vladimir, but the nose still isn't quite right. Make it look a little more like a pickle. Sweet? Dill. Off that side, just a pinch. Oh, like this? Yeah, yeah, you've done it. That's him. Ah, how much do I owe you? For you, comrade, hundred dollars. What? Fifty dollars. A buck. S sell my genius for a buck? <laughs> I die first. A buck and a quarter. Comrade, please, I'm a capitalist now. A buck and a half, last price. I wouldn't... 
Last price. Last price, I take it. But I may die. If you do, give me a call. It's a good job, Vladimir. Of course. Was I not the artist who sketched the Tsar himself? Of course, it didn't pay so well, but it was great honor. Looks pretty fuzzy to me. Comrade Diamond, your patronage I appreciate. But if you must bring along this peasant, don't. Even his face makes me sick with the repulse. Uh, Otis, come on. You have to pardon him, Vladimir. Whenever his shoelaces come untied, his brains slip out. See you later. Oh, comrade. Comrade. When we left Vladimir, I sent Otis back to Walt and took off for the newspapers. I showed the sketch to one society reporter after another and watched so many heads shake, my eyes began to cross. It was 6.30 when I finished playing Quizmaster, and there was no use kidding myself. I had struck out. I had to tell Walt, so I started for the 5th Precinct. I was at a point where I'd have hocked my social security for 30 seconds with a little big man. Then as I walked down the street, I... Suddenly felt the nerves in my spine jump down into the pit of my stomach and goose pimples skidded up my back like scared rice. It was a feeling I'd had before. So without turning, I headed for the steps of a basement apartment. Well, I got my meeting with Big Man all right. It came within inches of being a vamp into a Gabriel solo. Big Man apparently thought his shots hit pay dirt. But when I peeked over the top of the stairs, he was in his car and going. I took in the torn knees of my pants, sent a few messages to the spirit world that would have barred me from any seance, and hauled what was left of the Diamond Detective Agency to see Walt Levinson. Well, you can have it, Walt. This is getting ridiculous. Beating my brains out, getting shot at, and for what? Shot at? That's right. I said shot at. You can have the whole stupid mess. I like to get fees for playing post office with slugs. And if a guy gets killed, call me. I'll help with the embalming. But, but... Oh, but nothing. It's 7 o'clock and I'm not sticking around to split a three-way crying job over a killing that may already have happened. I'm going to Helen's and get a drink. Oh, all right. Go ahead, Rick. There's nothing more you can do anyhow. I'll see you later. Right. And you stop looking like a panda with a bellyache, Otis. No, what did I do? Oh, shut up. Uh, hey, where you going? I'm going out and punch the first little guy I can find right in the nose, just on general principles. I left the precinct and headed for Helen's party. I remembered that the benefit was being held in the penthouse and went on up. I was surprised to find Helen's butler, Francis, opening the door. Good evening, Mr. Depp. Oh, my, did you have an accident? This day has been an accident, Francis. But if you mean my clothes, I was playing spin the bottle with a bulldozer. You do look a little battered, if I may say so, sir. You ought to see the bulldozer. What are you doing opening the door up here? Oh, the Parker's butler was taken ill, sir. As I was helping Miss Asher with the decorations anyway, I remain to take his place for this evening. Is she here? Yes, yeah, yeah, she's in the living room, sir. Thanks, I'll go on in. Rick, over here. Hello, baby. What? Hit you a bus? Just a door and a sidewalk. The bus I get later. Oh, Rick. And just look at your suit. It's ruined. Now, what's with the concern over my suit? You lobbying for my tailor? I wanted you to look your very best tonight. Here, let me see those knees. Come on, sit over here. That's it. Now... Oh, well, they're not as bad as I thought. Oh, cheer up. Maybe they'll get infected. That'll help. Who did this to you, Rick? Our sweet little friend of this morning, Big Man, or I should say his boss, J.B. He's the one who sent Big Man after me. J.B.? A specter sent to haunt me for my past sins. He hired the little killer you saw me sock with my yo-yo. Your yo-yo? Oh, you haven't lost your yo-yo, have you? Oh, Helen, baby, your Ricky's nearly been killed. Must you worry about my yo-yo? I'm sorry, but it is all right. In my pocket, here. See? Good as new. Oh, that's fine. Now, what about this J.B. person? Why did he send Big Man to kill you, Rick? Because I know he's going to commit a murder tonight. Maybe doing it right now. Wait a minute. You said Big Man. Did you let him go this morning? Uh, yeah, yeah, I let him go. And I've worn my feet off up to my eyebrows trying to find out who his boss is and who's on the spot to get knocked off. Oh, poor Ricky. I wish I could help you. It's not me that needs help now. I quit. It's the guy J.B. is after. J.B., uh... Are those his real initials? Yeah. No, we've had lots of things to go on. Initials, descriptions, even a sketch of him. 
Here, I've got it in my pocket for all the good it did. Oh, wait, don't tear it up. Let me look at it. Oh, Rick, silly. This is no murderer. That's a sketch of Johnny Blackwell. It's a ske- Helen, you know who this man is? Of course. It's Johnny Blackwell from Newport. He and his wife are up here visiting Adam Worcester. Rick, what is it? You're... You're all turning blue. All day long, I... When you were in my office, you could... Oh, if I'd only asked Helen... Yes, Rick? Give me some cyanide, no water. Oh, but you must be mistaken about the sketch. Johnny Blackwell can't be a murderer. Well, I'm getting out of here. Where can I find him? If you'll just sit still, he'll come to you. Adam Wister's bringing him and his wife to the benefit tonight. Well, that's the way the screwy world works sometimes. One minute you're on your uppers, with a stick of baloney, you're trying to hold off three guys with swords, then Kismet makes a switch and tags your side for a gain and you're living. I called Walt to pass on the good news, and in eight and a half minutes by the clock, he joined me with Sergeant Otis in the kitchen from where we could peek out at the growing crowd. Let me take a look, Rick. Has Blackwell come in yet? Oh, stay back. I'll let you know. Otis, get out of that icebox. Oh, I'm hungry. You heard me. Oh, that's fried chicken, Lieutenant. Fried chicken? Mm, I haven't had... Otis. Oh. Walt, Walt, come take a look. There's Blackwell. Where? Over there, just sitting down. The man with the sandy hair. Yeah, yeah, I see him. Who are those people with him? Well, the woman must be his wife. Oh, but get a load of the little weasel. That's big man, the guy who got away from me this morning. Oh, and the other man? Must be Adam Wister. Helen said he was bringing the Blackwells. Well, he did. So now we wait for the play. Well, we waited and watched the Blackwell party settle down to enjoy itself. Big man acted like he hadn't eaten for a week and made hors d'oeuvres vanish in his mouth like marbles down a manhole. After what seemed like weeks, the situation grew, suddenly took shape. On Blackwell's urging, big man rose to dance with Mrs. Blackwell. Mrs. Blackwell was a dark-haired honey with curves right out of one of my better dreams. But my mind was on her husband and Worcester. As soon as they had the chance, they got up and headed out of the room. Them, Rick. They're headed for the library. Come on, this way. Through this door and down the hall. Well, Adam, it's nice to be visiting you again. Well, oh, glad to have you, Johnny. We're sorry to hear about your losses in the market last year. The story here was that you were cleaned out. Hey, Diamond, what's he saying? Shut up, old Oh, I still have a little money, Adam. In fact, I'd like to buy back in with you as a partner. You don't have that much, Johnny. Your wife won't give it to you. She may, Adam. She may, and quicker than you think. Walt, come on. We've picked the wrong victim. Let's find the big man. Hey, it's nice on the terrace, Mrs. Blackwell. Yeah, real nice out here. I don't like it. It's chilly. Oh, it'll warm up, Mrs. Blackwell. No, I'm going back in. Better not. I don't like the way you're acting, big man. Get out of my way. Get back and shut up. How dare you talk to me like that, you little... Now I'm big, Mrs. Blackwell, real big. A gun? What in the world? I'm gonna kill you. Kill me? Yeah. Only it'll look like an accident. Why, this is ridiculous. What kind of a joke is this? (laughs) It's no joke, Mrs. Blackwell. Your husband don't think it's no joke. He wanted me to tell you he was real sorry. Now I'm gonna kill you. You mean it. You really mean it? Yeah, sure, Mrs. Blackwell. Mr. Blackwell needs your dough. Bad. Back up. He can have it, all of it. Only don't kill me. Don't. Sorry, Mrs. Blackwell, too late. Now start back. Please, please. Over to that wall. You're going to play Humpty Dumpty. That's right. Now get up on the wall. No, no. I'm a guy who's willing to help you. Me, too. Diamond, why you... Catch the girl, Walt. Big man's mine. He, He was going to kill me. All right, Mrs. Blackwell. Take her inside, Otis. Rick, you okay? Yeah, getting my hands on this little rat was better than a year's vacation. Well, we sure heard enough to give both him and Blackwell a long vacation on the state. Keep him on ice. I'll collect the other one. I'll be delighted. Uh, Oh, my jaw. Oh, waking up? Uh, What a shame. (laughs) What a lovely party. I do love these informal get-togethers, don't you, big man? Uh, Oh... 
It was short but very sweet, the wind-up of the no-one-was-murdered case. The score was the kind to make you forget you didn't get a fee. Two killers caught, no victims. When I saw Walt take the little big man, not so big without his gun, and his boss Blackwell off to the Bastille, my worries melted like a snowman in a blast furnace. And speaking of melting, the lovely Mrs. Blackwell showed signs of being upset. So, what could I do but console the pretty little thing? Oh, Mr. Diamond, I think you were so wonderful and brave. Oh, you show a few nice points yourself, Mrs. Blackwell, and call me Rick. You saved my life, Rick. And call me Rita. You can get to the point quick. Why, Rita? Oh, there you are, Mrs. Blackwell. I know you must be terribly upset. Oh, Rick has been a great comfort to me. I'll bet he has. But I've arranged for Francis to take you home. Uh, now. Now? Oh, well, thank you, Miss Asher. And Rick. Yes? Don't worry about the name calling. Just say, hey, you. I'll know what you mean. I think I know what you mean. By you. Well? So help me, I'm innocent. With lipstick on your collar? That orders. I've warned him to be careful with my shirts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, time for my yo-yo act? Your act. I... Oh, Rick, uh, about that... No, no, no. Look, I've worked my finger to the bone practicing. Don't tell me. Why, well, you specifically asked me to be here tonight. I, I know. And come on with me over to the bandstand. Oh, no. No, you don't. I'm an artist tonight, not a singer. No sing, no yo-yo. You mean if I sing, I can do my yo-yo act? If you make it pretty. Uh, it's blackmail, but I'll do it. Well, you stay right here. I want to talk to the orchestra leader. Okay, I'll practice. <laughs> I give you Richard Diamond, his piano, and his yo-yo. <laughs> Sing good, Rick. Like a robin with a sponsor. Are the stars out tonight? I don't know if it's cloudy or bright. Cause I only have eyes for you, dear. The moon may be high. But I can't see a thing in the sky Cause I only have eyes For you I don't know if we're in a garden Or on a crowded avenue You are here So am I Maybe millions of people go by, but they all disappear from view. And I only have eyes for you. present an exhibition of dexterity. Now? Now. Oh, no, Shamus, no. You're doing it all wrong. You gotta use more wrist action. Oh, the start of the act. Oh, come on, let me show you. Here, give it to me. Now, you, you start it down, like this. Helen. Yes, Rick, he's better. Uh, let's go home and neck. Wait till I get my hat. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Hans Conried, Grace Albertson, Sidney Miller, and High Everback. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Tonight's story was written by Herb Purdom and edited and directed by Blake Edwards. Portions of the program were transcribed. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. <coughs> now this is Tal Avery inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective.
Saturday night is packed with entertainment when you stay tuned for NBC's star lineup of shows. There's always a program of interest on NBC. Now stay tuned for Edward G. Robinson and the Hollywood Star Theater on NBC. Hi, this is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site where we put out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Well, a very inventive plot. Of course, Mr. Blackwell, besides being a murderer, is a bit of a loon here. Going to a private detective and and asking if there's any flaws in the murder plan. It's particularly odd with this one, because the plan is pretty straightforward. Have a four-foot-tall person murder your wife while you're in the other room. I can all also understand and believe Diamond uh, giving up on the case when they were just plain out of clothes. I did think it was a little bit silly for Lieutenant Levinson to poo-poo the idea of having an artist come in to watch the uh, would-be killer. And it's even more hard to buy that the NYPD didn't have its own artist. Even back then, they'd have somebody to go to, rather than Diamond having to hunt down a comedy Russian character to do the drawing. And a dollar and fifty cents. Diamond should have been ashamed of himself on that one. Uh, I also have to say that the yo-yo sound was interesting. Apparently, I've not got... Because I know there are yo-yos that make sounds like that, but the ones that I've gotten, I'm certainly no yo-yo aficionado. Been uh, a lot uh, quieter. But I did like Sergeant Otis actually getting to prove his worth. And best diamond at the fine art of yo-yo. Otis will take the wins where he can get them. All right, that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for Boston Blackie. And next Wednesday, it's another episode of Richard Diamond. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become...